Hi, I'm Karen. Welcome to my kitchen. We have a very special show for you today. In fact, did I just hear wedding bells? Stick around to find out. We'll be right back. Kick it. excited about today's show because we are talking all about weddings and here to help us is the host of the fabulous new wedding show I do the ultimate wedding show Chelsea Cardwell Chelsea welcome to the kitchen thank you so much for having me I can't wait to get cooking do you like to cook I absolutely love it doesn't mean I'm good at it but I do enjoy doing it <laughs> well as long as it's fun it can be messy and get your hands into it exactly. and, and if someone else is doing the dishes afterwards that awesome. is huge I don't have that <laughs> luck unfortunately <laughs> but let's get started cooking so we can kind of perfect talk and yeah. walk talk and walk talk and cook at the same time great brunch are great when you have people coming in from out of town for weddings right. and you know you're taking them out to dinner and you're spending all this money but then you can just kind of do a nice brunch at home yeah. and they're all there and you're comfortable and this is great because you prep it the night before right. so you can get up and kind of relax a little bit and you're not running around in the kitchen. Right. So the first thing we're going to use is French bread okay. and you can use challah bread or any kind of bread but I like the crusty French bread because you get a nice crust on the French toast after right. it's done baking. And the way I typically cut it is I'll do it kind of on a bias. Mm -hmm. And you can just kind of hold it on the side. I'm going to ask you to help me with this. Okay, perfect. And just cut it at an angle. You're trusting me and with just, this. I am. <laughs> and we're just going to do about three quarter of inch slices okay. all the way down. Sounds good. While you do that, I'm going to get our pan ready. And we're going to use just a regular 9 by 13 glass pan. And one little trick that I have is when I use butter, which I do, I always save the wrappers because it's an easy way to butter the pan without getting your hands all dirty. Did you know that? I did not. It's a little kitchen tip. You just want to put the buttery side down and just kind of wipe your pan all with it. Yeah. So your hand stays nice and clean and you're getting right. butter on there. You want to get all the cracks in. This is going to be so good. This is actually creme brulee overnight French toast. Sounds amazing. Super delicious. So tell me about I Do. Well, it's our brand new wedding show, which I love because I get to ask all the questions that you would never think about as a bride until it's too late. It sounds yep. like a video guidebook. It really is. That's the perfect definition of it. So while you keep cutting, because we're okay. going to need probably a few more pieces, I'm going to go ahead and arrange these slices of French toast in our baking pan. 9 by 13, okay. 9 by 13, yep. And I'm using a glass pan. You can use metal, but kind of, I like glass. Doesn't matter. Doesn't and matter. What was the way that you told me I was cutting the bread? You're What's cutting it on a bias. On a bias. At an angle. Okay. And really, the only reason I'm putting it in here is just to make sure I have enough and that it fits, because I'm going to take it out and do some other stuff before. Okay. But tell <laughs> me more about I do. When you shoot, where do you typically shoot? So. The greatest part about our show that I love is that we get to really show off Virginia in general. Oh, nice. Um, so we go all over. We go Virginia Beach, Hampton Roads, Richmond, Williamsburg. It's all over. It's Norfolk. So I love it because I have learned so much about the area that I didn't know about. And when you're, when you're filming and you're talking to all these experts, do you also film wedding locations? Yep. Yeah, we did a great one at the Botanical Gardens that was so oh, it's beautiful. beautiful there. Um, we did the Sandra Lang Resort. I didn't want to leave. <laughs> it was really <laughs> hard to wake up the next morning. Did you ever get to try to have you go? Yes, I did. <laughs> that was entertaining, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here you have them. They're all kind of fitting in there nice and flat. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and take these two little pieces, put them right That's there. That's for me later. That's for you later. <laughs> Unless I get to them first. <laughs> I'm going to pull these back out. And, um, but now we know how much to use and that it fits, and we're not going to end up with a big hole in the middle, which right. I've done before. Right. Okay, so okay. here I have one stick of butter. So it's half a cup of butter, and I just melted okay. it in the microwave. Okay. To that, I'm going to add um, one cup of light brown sugar. Okay. And you want to really firmly pack that cup. I'm just going to dump that in there. And then we're going to start, we're meaning you. These slide okay. these over. I'm going to start whisking. Okay. You really want to get that incorporated really well. What you'll see is the butter will kind of try to separate and come up to the top. Right. So you really need to mix that in. Okay. And while you do that, I'm going to add two teaspoons of maple syrup. You can add corn syrup, light or dark. I like maple syrup because it gives it a nice flavor. Right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pour this maple okay. syrup in. And I like to use natural maple syrup because it has a stronger flavor. It's richer. Right. But you can use, you know, any kind of brand you get off the shelf. Yeah. All right. Does that look pretty good oh, mixed yeah. in? Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take that. It's almost like a paste, what you end up with. Okay. And we're going to pour that into the bottom of this pan. Okay. And this is going to be our delicious base. Good. Yeah, just kind of shake it out of there. 
Ooh. Hello. <laughs> it's a party now. You look like me. I love it. <laughs> I definitely do. Okay, I have a little spatula, spoonula sort of situation. Okay. And I'm just going to pour that all in. I kind of can't see from this angle so well. So uh, if you can take this over and just spread it out on the bottom of the pan. Perfect. Whoa, hello. There you go. It's kind of messy. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and put this bread back in in that, you know, kind of Tetris sort of situation. And if you want to grab that big bowl over there, and we're going to crack six eggs into it. Six. You can use this little white one to put the shells. All right. That sounds good. I try not to be messy when I cook, but it never works. Now, do you keep the eggs lukewarm room temperature? Um, I usually just pull them out maybe 10 minutes before I start cooking. Okay. Awesome. Make a little room here. I don't want to lose any bread. No, that's the most important part. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. You know, I actually, I also make this for Christmas. And it's great. I make it the night before, and then, you know, I pull it out as soon as we get up, and then we'll pop it in the oven while the kiddos are opening presents and stuff, and then you don't have to do it for That's awesome. It's a crowd pleaser, and it's a mom pleaser. Yeah, it's definitely a mom pleaser. <laughs> I actually stole that idea from a friend of mine. <laughs> so what's been the most exciting thing you've done with I Do? Oh, man, I really love going to the Sanderling. I mean, it's a really hard day at the office when you have to walk on the beach every day. But in general, just the whole Summer. experience has been great because I really didn't know a lot about weddings in general before. So just getting to ask all these questions has been really fun. Yeah. So if someone doesn't catch the episode on TV, can they watch it online? Yeah, absolutely. Every episode is on your view and you can stream them all. Yeah. Great. Oh, you have Now you can't make the little flower. <laughs> <laughs> this actually is a cup and a half of half and half. Okay. You can use whole milk if you want, but you know, weddings, Christmas, it's a little bit extra. Yeah, a little extra yeah. splurge. We're, we're gonna go so go ahead and whisk those up. All right, same. Yep, that's not, yeah, that's, you know, all mixing together anyways. Yeah, true. And while you're doing that, I am going to add two teaspoons of vanilla, mm -hmm. vanilla extract. Gives it that creme brulee flavor. Yes, and that, the way that the brown sugar and the butter mix together, it's, and it kind oh, of rises yeah. up as it bakes, it's so good. And once it's evenly yellow, then you're gonna add your half and half. Okay. And like I said, this is a cup and a half. Okay. And if you are baking this in a smaller pan, um, if you don't have a nine by 13, then just you know, cut out some of the milk, maybe take an egg out. But you can, it's so easy to adjust. Yeah. All right, so we're all whisked up. Okay, yes we are. Okay, and you can add a pinch of salt if you want. You don't have to, I usually don't. Okay. Um, and then we're just gonna go ahead and pour that okay. over the top. You wanna make sure you get it on the tops of all the little breads so everything's nice right. and covered. Kind of use this to scooch them out. And it's gonna spend about 12 hours or 10 hours in that refrigerator, and the bread is gonna be absorbing all of that egg mixture. Okay. So it's so good, especially with that vanilla in there. And mm -hmm. I like to use a really good, good vanilla. Sometimes you splurge, sometimes you don't. Yep. Splurge on vanilla and olive oil. Those are my two Always. splurges. Yep. So I do the same get thing. Get this out of your way. Okay. And that, my friends, is it. That's so you, I would just cover this with saran wrap, and then, like I said, take it out the next morning, about 30 minutes before you're gonna cook it, so that it comes to more room temperature. You wanna put your oven on 350, mm -hmm. and then pop it in the oven for about 40 to 50 minutes, depending on how kind of nice and crusty you want the top, and, yeah. and then enjoy it. And you know what you could do? You could even do like a little sprinkle of uh, cinnamon or nutmeg for Christmas. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, I've got one that I have prepared ahead of time, and it is ready. The buzzer just went off a few minutes ago, so I'm gonna put this on the counter and pull that one out. Yay, I'm hungry, so I'm very excited. Ah. And if you're a sweet tooth, this is a, a I treat. Am. A treat. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. And that is what it's going to look like. So you can see the bread has absorbed that mixture. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice and crusty. This is a little bit of a smaller pan, so I did have to take some of that liquid out and some of the bread kind of popped up mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, but that's it. You can make any size you want. Do you want to try a little bit of it? I would love it. All right, well, we've got some plates. If you don't mind passing me that stuff over there, I'm going to scoop this out of the way. And that little square spatula. All spatula, right. serving spatula. This thing. <laughs> it's pretty hot. So, and I also like it because since you're doing, I like to do it with French bread, it kind of measures out the, the, sli the slices already. Right, exactly. So you can just put that. And that bottom is gonna be so delicious. Oh my gosh. Put that on there, and I like to put, you can put syrup, I do have syrup. You don't typically need it. I don't even think it. it would need it, yeah. It's gonna pass me that powdered sugar okay. just because I like to make things look fancy. <laughs> look at what I did. Yeah. Yeah, look so at that, pretty. right? Okay, put that on top. A little sprinkle of that. And tell me you would not be happy serving that at a brunch. Oh my gosh, right? looks so good. Want to give it a try? I would love some. Okay, let me put this down so you have some leverage. Thank you. And then, if, like I said, if you want syrup, help yourself. I think it's going to taste amazing without it. It's really good. Piece. Mm. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. It's good, isn't it? 
<laughs> that is so good. All right, well, we're going to keep diving into this, but we'll be right back with more French food. <laughs> Today we are with the beautiful Chelsea Cardwell, the host of I Do, The Ultimate Wedding Show. And today, Chelsea's gonna teach us how to keep everyone at the wedding happy. What are we doing today, Chelsea? Yes. Yeah, so here we have a Bloody Mary bar. And one great thing about doing a Bloody Mary bar is you can have a ton of options so that everybody can make it theirs and everyone's gonna be happy. I don't think I have ever seen this much <laughs> stuff. This is a whole meal in a glass. Absolutely. I like that. And that's kind of the fun of it, is you can add anything you want and make it huge. So you want to get started? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So I'm going to hand you the vodka. Okay. And if you want to start with the base, then we can kind of walk through all the different options we have. I grab a glass because that helps. Right. And grab the ice. Yep. It's kind of hot today. Uh, it is hot. We definitely need one of these. All right. So one great thing when you're planning a Bloody Mary bar is you can make it all your own. Literally anything. It's so fun. So we, what we have here is we have shrimp. We have pickles, we have pepperoni, we have carrots, tomatoes, cheese, we even have donuts. So you can make something that is sweet and savory. You can make something super hot. Um, you can make something even like Asian inspired and add soy sauce to it. Typically you put what about uh, an ounce and a half of vodka in a yep. Mary? To start. Just to start, it depends <laughs> on your day, right? Right, exactly. Now, I'm, the funny thing is about Bloody Marys, I feel like is if you ask anybody, everybody likes it differently. So that's one of the benefits of having this. Um, I like it almost tasting like tomato soup with vodka in it. Awesome. So how we get started is we make our base, right? So you chose the just the generic Bloody Mary mix, right? right? I like them pretty spicy, but you know. Okay, well why don't you make yours spicy and I'll make mine a little bit more funkier. Oh, so is that yours? Okay, that'll be yours. Okay. And if you can pass me some of that hot stuff. Perfect. All right, so yeah, we got some fun stuff here. We got like hot Asian sauce. We got soy sauce. We got Worcestershire. I've even heard of people putting in like beef stock. I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I like, um, I like, I'm picky with my Bloody Marys. I like them very salty. I don't like them sweet at all. Right. So I don't like it just the tomato sauce. So I typically I'll go for the sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, there we go. We are going to have a lot of fun. We also have grilled cheese. So, I mean, <laughs> you, can't, you can't have a tomato soup without a grilled cheese, right? Oh my gosh. Well, I would imagine you have some crazy wedding stories. You know what? I do. I think the best part about a wedding is the, the community, like the family feel of it, the time before. I mean, it's, it's a party, yeah, but you don't want it to be like a three hour party. You want it to be like a three day party that you can just celebrate all those memories with your family and your friends. I don't even know what I'm putting in here, but I'm just putting it all in. I'm talking. Yeah. And I'm going to put a little bit of Worcestershire. Okay. And I'm weird and a sodium freak, so I'm going to do some soy sauce. Okay. <laughs> I don't usually put Worcestershire, but I'm just putting it all in. A lot of people will do like a seafood version, so you can do like some old bay seasoning, you can put some crab, shrimp. Mm -hmm. um, I love to do bacon, just some caramelized brown sugar bacon that you can bake in the oven. Oh, wow. Yep. So did you make that? I did. Can I, do I have it in the so bed? Don't sue me can if I just you get it. sick. Can I, just, <laughs> can I just eat this? Yes. Yeah. You got to get all the fat in there. Delicious. Mm-hmm. Celery for stirring. I'm just chewing. <laughs> All right, all right, so I'm gonna dig into all these different options. We so we got some cheese. So how do you come up with I see these donuts? Do people put yeah. donuts in their Oh no, I mean people go and they'll make like a tower out of their drink. I don't know, no. I mean it's not necessarily about mixing it all together. Mm -hmm. um, it's more about just the fun of like while you're sitting around, you can have a meal on a stick. <laughs> I love these blue. Um, Blue, blue cheese. Blue fish. Blue cheese. Yeah, the blue cheese. <laughs> I haven't out. even had my Bloody Mary yet. <laughs> <laughs> Those are so good. Mm -hmm. Did you make these? Mm. No. If you <laughs> said yes, I would have believed you. <laughs> Why? Um, that's true. You're a good person. Mm -hmm. Put some cheese on mm -hmm. there. Yeah, I'll just eat the cheese. Here's my problem. I would eat the bar before mm -hmm. I made it to the Bloody Mary. I've gotten like six sticks going on here, just that's putting it up. Mm -hmm. Here you go. So. Now I have a question. Mm -hmm. If there are people that are not fond of the Bloody Mary, ow, <laughs> or don't want to risk scaring themselves, what do you suggest? You know what, there are so many great options for brunch type, mm -hmm. you know, cocktails. So um, another, a great one that I love is like a screwdriver. So we can do vodka and orange juice. And I like that because you have the vodka already. Right. And you've got the oranges and it's very healthy. You've got vitamin C. Yeah. 
<laughs> you can also do mimosas, uh, tequila sunrise. Ooh, tequila yeah. sunrise, I like that. Yeah, I do too. That's a great That's drink. like an old school drink. Oh yeah. Okay. You, you get the cranberry and you get the orange juice. All the benefits. I'm gonna go for one of these grilled cheeses. Oh, that looks really yeah. good. Yeah, we're gonna make this like a party. <laughs> do we need a bigger glass? We probably need another <laughs> a bigger glass. Look at that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Oh yeah. All right, look at that. I gotta get some potato wedges. Oh yeah. So it's really fun because you can, it's just, it's hilarious, but you also have an entire meal. <laughs> and it's a tasty treat. I actually need to drink mine. Well, thank you so much for teaching me how oh. to do this. We're gonna have a few drinks and the next segment is gonna be very interesting, so you don't wanna miss it. <laughs> More interesting than this one. <laughs> After these. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> 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 If you missed the last segment, you've got to check it out online because it was definitely a party. We're here today with Chelsea Cardwell, the host of I Do the Ultimate Wedding Show, and we are talking all about wedding brunches. Yeah. Thanks again for coming to the kitchen. Yeah, Chelsea. I'm having so much fun. Well, now we're going to work on something that I kind of call egg pockets. I don't really have a name for them. Um, I've seen different versions of them before, and it's a very simple thing that you can do in a big quantity. You can bake them all at once, mm -hmm. so people aren't waiting for their in like their omelet and one's getting cold right. while the other's getting hot. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to put you to work. Okay, sounds good. We're going to start with the bread. Okay. Make some room over here for you. Sounds and if you just want to put those little bread slices okay. up, and you're going to cut the crust off. You can okay. probably do like three at a time or so. Okay. This little person, we're going to use that for garnish later. Okay. So it might be easier, quicker if you just stack them. That's a good idea. I'm all about the quick and easy. Mm -hmm. So um, what I've gotten here is we're going to make a bechamel sauce that's going to be part of this whole process. Okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to start doing that while you're taking care of the bread. Okay. I've got one um, tablespoon of butter in here, and this little hot plate's on, so it's already melted, but it's just one tablespoon. I mean, probably can't even see it. One tablespoon of butter, and to that I'm going to add, excuse me, go ahead, one tablespoon of flour. I'm just making a roux, and if you've seen this show before, you know we make lots of roux. <laughs> Because you use them in so many things, soups, mac and cheese, I mean everything. Now what defines a bechamel sauce? Bechamel is made with um, with a roux, which is half, uh, I'm sorry, equal quantities of fat and flour. Okay. And you can use olive oil, you can use you know rice flour, you can use different things. And then you're going to add, um, I'll add milk to it. Mm -hmm. and I believe you can do it with an almond milk or cashew milk as well if you're trying to be vegan. Interesting. Okay. Um, but it's going to be a really nice uh, white cream sauce and you can typically put a little bit of nutmeg in there, mm -hmm. depending on what you're using it for. Okay. Um, you can add different things to give it some flavor. Great. So while I'm doing this, so right now I've got kind of like a paste with the butter and the flour. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just let it cook some of that raw flour flavor off. Right. While I do that, if you can take this rolling pin and mm -hmm. you want to kind of flatten out these breads and you can put yep. the crusts back on. Save it here. Yeah, we want to save those. Give yourself some room, yeah. Okay, so again, I have one tablespoon of butter, one tablespoon of flour, and I'm going to add just about three-fourths cup of milk. And I'm going to do it slowly because if I do it slowly at first, it won't lump up on me as bad. Ooh. Do you cook a lot? I do, and I, you know, I used to do a lot of my own homemade sauces and stuff, but oh, okay. I am super ADD, shocker, and <laughs> and I would start 10 different things, and I would always end up burning that process. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you kind of got to keep on it, because it comes together really quickly. Yeah, I bet. I'm but just whisking it like a mad woman here. So once you get about half of the milk, and you can dump the rest of it in it, we won't cook them, but give you uh, lumps. So now that you've got this flattened out, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you, this is about three tablespoons of melted butter. Okay. And if you can take this little brush and butter those on okay. both, sides. both sides. Yep. I don't know why this is so fun. <laughs> Painting with butter. <laughs> so how long have you been on I Do? How long has that been airing? About? I Do is, is really brand new. Um, where we just aired our third episode. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so it's really, really fun. Just, it's such a learning process. So you see it's starting to boil and it's mm -hmm. going to start getting thicker. It's going to slowly come together. And this is, would also be a good base for gravies that you want to do. Right. Um, gosh, I use it in so many different things. I'm almost done here. Okay. After you're done with that, we're going to put those into the muffin tins. Okay, perfect. Turn this off. That's amazing. I'm going to take this off the heat and just put it right there so it'll cool down. Okay. And while I do that, I'm going to take these little pieces of bread and you're going to put them into your muffin cups. We're only doing six, but you could do, if you had, you know, 10 or right. 20 people even coming for brunch, you could even do two trays of these at the same time. Right. And they would all be done. It's great. Right. 
I'm just go ahead and kind of tuck them in there. Okay. And make a little cup shape. Okay. 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 Right. I'll do the last one here with you. Looks great. And then these are like almost like little ham and cheese sandwiches with a little bit of bechamel and egg. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread some Dijon mustard. And I've got a tablespoon of Dijon mustard over right there. And I've got another one of these. Okay. Um, just go ahead and spread some, or brush it I guess, into these, but not too much. You don't okay. have too much. Just a and little. And if you don't like it, just leave it out. I mean, you gotta take these recipes and make them your own. Is that a good amount right there? Like that? Yeah, that's okay. good. Just whatever you would like. Okay. Okay. And it's so simple. We just have a couple more ingredients to go and we're done. I preheated my oven to about 350 degrees and these are only going to take about 15 to 20 minutes to bake. Just depends on how done you like your egg. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Done with that. So now we're going to um, put the ham in there. Okay. And if you don't want the meat, you can always leave it out. Just um, a little sprinkle. Yeah, you could put whatever you want. You put roast beef in there. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to, I'm just going to put a little bit of salt and pepper here in the bechamel. Okay. Just to give it a little more flavor. And you can use any kind of cheese. I have a combination here of cheddars and gouda. Sorry, okay. Gouda. Go. So if you want to go ahead and sprinkle just a little, just okay. a little bit, because we're going to put a little bit more on top. Just okay. a couple little okay. sprinkles. Okay. Let's go ahead and crack our eggs and just put one in each little cup. Okay. And a um, little tip, if you crack the egg on a flat surface, mm -hmm. for some reason there's less chance of shell getting in your egg. Huh. And I think okay. it's because you turn it over with your thumbs and break it apart. Right. Okay, so while you're cracking those last couple of eggs, I'm going to spoon some of this bechamel over the top. Still hot once it cools down, it gets a little bit thicker. But it's still wow. pretty hot. You can see little chunks of Yeah. So let's go ahead and sprinkle a little more cheese okay. on top. <laughs> and then we're going to pop these into the oven, like I said, for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And just give that white a time to set mm -hmm. and that yolk to cook a little bit. If you like them cooked all the way through, 20 to 25 minutes is great. Mm -hmm. um, if you like them a little more runny, you know, 14, 15 minutes. Yeah. That, I mean, I love that moment where you like cut into it and the yellow goes everywhere. Yes. It's like this beautiful so little rewarding. velvety sauce. Yes. yes. <laughs> it is its own sauce. Yeah. All absolutely. Right. I'm going to pop these into the oven. Yay. Can you put that towel on here for me? This yep. pan is pretty hot. So while we were talking, I had one in the oven baking. Just to save a little bit of time here. Perfect. And there we go. Oh, wow. Those if you want to grab that plate and that okay. fork and knife, we can dive into one of these and okay. see how it looks. Do you need this? Um, no. Okay. Just that little fork and knife would be. There you are. Like I said, depending on how solid you like your yolks will depend on how long you keep it in the oven. Right. So these went a little longer because we were chit-chatting oh, a they lot. They still look great, though. But it looks like it might still be perfect. Wow. And if you want to get fancy, you can put a little piece of parsley on there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you want to cut into it and see All how, right. how it looks? All right. Sounds good. Oh wow. Look That's at cool. that. That is perfect. You can see your egg yolk, your bechamel, mm -hmm. your ham, your cheese. It looks delicious. Mm, it smells so good too. Right, you take a bite. Yeah, absolutely. This is such a great brunch thing because like I said, you can make a bunch at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can also have a bunch. You can have a bunch. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's yummy, isn't it? Wow. And so quick and easy to make. And that's when you're in your wedding, the throes of all of that, and you have mm -hmm. all the people and the family and all the chaos going on. It's nice just to be able to do something easy that everyone's gonna like. Right, and I also like the fact that it doesn't feel too heavy. You yeah. know, especially if it is the morning of your wedding and <laughs> you wanna still fit in your dress later. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Oh it's my been gosh. so much fun with you today. Thank you so much for having me. I've had so much fun. Great, and thank you for watching. If you missed any part of this or any other episodes, you can catch them all on yourview.com. Don't forget to like me at Karen is Cooking from the Heart. And don't forget to watch I Do, also yes. on Your View. And do you have a website? Yes, we have Facebook, and we also are on yourview.com. Great, make sure you check them out. But most importantly, remember, you don't have to be a trained chef or cook to prepare delicious, healthy wedding brunches. You just have to cook from the heart. Our wedding reception was crashed by zombies. But you know, I guess that's pretty cool if the undead come to your place to party. Right. That's a sign of a good wedding, right? Sure, it's a good omen. Mm -hmm. So many great options for morning. <laughs> morning drinking. Morning, um, morning drinking. Nice. <laughs> the real stuff. Okay.